So you are using Wix stores and you want to utilize the native cart page and experience, but you want to customize the checkout. You don't want to use the native Wix checkout. You want to either take people to a quote form or some kind of custom uh, payment system or whatnot. Welcome back to the Wix Wiz. I'm Aton, and today we're going to be talking about how we can hijack this checkout button right over here in Wix so that it still looks just like the native one. I bet you don't even notice the difference, but if I go ahead and I click this button, it will actually take me to another page of my site, which is a custom checkout page. If you wanna learn how to do all that and more, wait one second, go ahead and hit that subscribe button first before you forget, because there are gonna be a lot more cool videos just like this one coming out week after week. And after you've done that, and you've made me really happy and probably you really happy as well, let's get started. Before we get started, let's just make sure we're all on the same page about what our challenge is and what we're trying to do in order to solve it. So the challenge is if you are using Wix stores like I am here on this site, and we go ahead and we add a few items to cart, uh, and then we go ahead and head to the native Wix cart page. If we click this checkout button right over here, it is going to take us to the native Wix checkout. At the moment, I don't have payments connected, so I'm getting this warning here. But in a scenario where you're accepting payments on your site, that's where this button will take you. And you have no way to replace this button uh, or the link of this button to go somewhere else. Why would you want to do that? For example, if you are building a site where people don't pay, but rather they need to be taken to some kind of quote form that they fill out and then it places an order without payment so that you can then reach out to the customer and give them a quote or an estimate. Um, other scenarios might be if you want to use a custom payment provider without using the payment provider SPI and without completely overriding the cart. So until now, uh, our approach was that if you wanted to create a custom checkout experience, you would also need to completely customize the cart. And that's what we touched on in this series over here, uh, the custom cart page series. Uh, and it's, you know, a series with multiple parts. So it's quite involved and quite complex to customize the cart. And there are still scenarios where you might decide you want to customize the cart. For example, if you want to change the design fundamentally, or you want to add certain features specifically to the cart, experience. But what we're going to try and do in this tutorial is create a way that you can still use the native Wix cart if it works for you and still go to a custom checkout page of your choice just by clicking a button over here for checkout. So that's what we're trying to do today. And let's hop in and see how we can possibly do that. A couple of notes before we get started. Today I am working in the Wix Classic Editor, but everything we are doing should be possible inside of Wix Studio as well. Uh, we have uh, pretty much a template site with Wix stores installed, and we're going to be using custom code for our solution. Not Velo code, but custom code inside of the dashboard. You can find the custom code section inside of settings, so it's settings custom code. And it's important to note that in order to add custom code to your website, you need to have a premium site with a custom domain. Uh, I am currently using what's called a dev site, which gives some premium site capabilities. Uh, but if you want to do this on your own site, then you are going to need to upgrade. This is the Wix stores cart page. And as you can see, it is a closed box application. Uh, there are some APIs that allow us to interact with the cart. But generally, we don't have access to the UI and definitely not the button uh, that we want to try and control since uh, we don't even see the cart elements when we're inside of the editor. Uh, there are some settings over here, but none of them really allow us to access that specific button that we're trying to control. Uh, for that reason, what we're going to try and do is try and hijack that button through the HTML itself. So if we go here to the live site and open up our inspection panel over here, and we try and find this checkout button. Uh, so we can see here that this is the button here inside of the HTML. 
uh, and it's let's say inside of this data hook, uh, this div with a data hook of checkout buttons dot default. Okay, and here it's important to note that uh, if you have something called express checkout activated, then you might see several checkout buttons, like also with you know uh, PayPal and other things. So you may want to dis you know deactivate express checkout if that's causing issues in implementing what we're doing in this tutorial or make some adjustments to the code but i'm going to assume for now that you just have this one checkout button over here so what we're going to do is essentially i am going to go ahead and get rid of this button okay using uh, plain javascript using a script and i'm going to replace it with a button of my own that is going to go to another page on the site so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go over here to the editor and I'm going to create a new page here on the site. So let's just go ahead and create a page. For now, it's going to be a blank page. And this page I'm just going to call custom checkout. So let me go ahead and change the name over here. So custom checkout, just like that. And I'm also going to just verify what its URL is. So I'm going to go here to SEO basics and I can see here that it changed to custom checkout, which is perfect. Uh, let's just go ahead and add in a title for now. So I'm going to go ahead and add some text. Uh, let's add in a heading one. And I'm just going to write here on top custom checkout so that when we arrive on this page, we know immediately that we're in the right place. So our goal is going to be to create an experience where when the user clicks on whatever button we have over here for the checkout, it will go to that page. And then we can essentially control the checkout experience from there. So uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to select this element uh, using JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy this element right over here. So copy element. And I'm going to head over to ChatGPT. And I'm going to say, write a script that selects this element and replaces it with a button that uh, navigates to slash custom checkout in the same domain. Okay, that's what we're trying to achieve here. And I'm just going to paste the HTML element right over here. And let's see what ChatGPT recommends for selecting the button. Okay, great. So what they do here is we're adding an event listener, which is not something that I uh, think that we need at the moment uh, for DOM content loaded. I think instead of that, I'm just going to put the script kind of on the bottom of the body in order to make it run. Uh, and then we're using this query selector over here, uh, just like that, in order to select the button using, um, let's see, so it's using this data, uh, this data attribute. Okay, so data Wix checkout button equals to this. Okay, so just, whoops switch something around there, uh, just to give some context into how we're selecting the button. So I'm going to go over here, back over here. So you can see that we have uh, this data hook right over here, data Wix checkout button, and that equals to checkout button data hook dot button. And that is essentially what ChatGPT decided would be the best way to select this element. Um, there are possibly other ways that we could have selected it using like the data hook or whatnot. Um, but this is, I guess, the most explicit or, or whatnot. Um, so that's uh, how we're selecting the element. Uh, sorry. And then once we um, selected that element, essentially what we're doing is we're creating a new button over here. Uh, and that is uh, an, a button element. We're giving it an inner text of checkout uh, so that it says checkout on the button. And um, we are attributing it the class of the original button. So that's that's actually pretty smart if it works um, to preserve the styling of the button. So let's see if that works out for it. 
and um, we are setting a type of button. I don't know if that's so necessary. We can check that in a moment. And we are adding a click event listener so that we navigate to the custom checkout page when, uh, when it's clicked. Okay, and then last thing we're doing is replacing the original button with the new button. Okay, so that's what we're doing over here. And again, as I said, I'm not gonna do it inside of this um, DOM content loaded event listener at the moment, but I'm actually just gonna put it as a script on the bottom of all of our HTML. Uh, and hopefully that will just run that script after the whole page is loaded, so we shouldn't have any issues there. Um, so I'm just gonna grab this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head back over here into our custom code. And again, I said I'm gonna put it here inside of body end. So let's go ahead and we're gonna to need to put this inside of a script. So we're gonna do here script, uh, opening and closing tags. And we're just gonna put the code right in over there. And uh, that's it. If you want, you could also put in a function and call the function, but for now, we'll just leave it like that. As you can see, it's not very user-friendly uh, to edit code in here. So if we need to make any adjustments to this code snippet later on, we might do it in a separate IDE, but for now, uh, that should do the trick. Uh, what I will do is I'm going to add a console log. So let's do console.log, and I'm gonna log original button just so that uh, we can see if this is working uh, and if we actually managed to select the correct button and whatnot. I'm gonna rename this right over here. So let's call this um, custom checkout. And instead of loading this on all pages, let's see if we can load this specifically uh, just on the cart page, because that's where we're gonna need it. So here uh, we can select cart page. So it's just this snippet is just going to run on our cart page. And again, in the body end, the reason for that is so that it runs after uh, all the HTML of the page loads. Uh, with Wix, it's a little complicated because sometimes part of the page is hydrated. Hydrated, like the HTML gets adjusted um, using JavaScript. So it's not like you just have the HTML and then any script on the bottom will just run smoothly. Uh, but let's give it a try and see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll adjust. So we're gonna be optimistic. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click apply. And now we're ready to hop in and do some testing. Here back on the live site, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give this a refresh. Uh, we should not need to publish the site again. Code snippets that are putting custom code should be active as long as they are toggled on uh, and work just by refreshing the page. No need to publish your site again. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna give this a hard refresh. And let's take a look here at this checkout button. So I see that the design here has changed slightly, uh, but then it kind of pops back. Okay, so this kind of has to do with what I was talking about, how the, that, you know, hydration issue that like JavaScript adjusts the HTML. So it could be that after our script ran, other scripts ran that kind of switched the button back for some reason. So let's just go ahead and try and click checkout over here and see where that goes. Yeah, so that opens the old Wix um, checkout thing over here. Let me see if I can try and refresh the page and click that checkout button quickly, just like that. So you see that went to our custom checkout. Okay, so the URL up here is slash custom checkout. So that is indeed the button we were trying to put there. Uh, for some reason it's a 404, maybe because I did not publish the site since adding this custom checkout page because I think the URL is correct. Yeah, custom checkout. So I'm gonna publish the site, again, not for the code snippet in the custom code, but so that we have that URL active. And I'm gonna refresh this just to make sure we don't hit a 404, which I still am. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so this is our custom checkout page. So generally, it seems like things are working. Um, we are temporarily managing to replace the button. Just for some reason, Wix is replacing the button. And this is this is that uh, console log, by the way, so we're managing to select the correct button. Wix uh, is running some kind of script, which is re-replacing the button after we're done replacing it. So what we can do is we can try and go with the initial recommendation um, that ChatGPT put over here. So to wrap this all inside of a DOM content loaded, 
I'm not super optimistic about this because it, I think that it's possible that this might be triggered also before uh, some of the JavaScript runs, but we can give it a try. So let me go ahead and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go back into our settings over here and I'm going to edit settings and I'm going to go ahead and change this out over here. So all I did is I'm using what ChatGPT recommended as is. So we're using this DOM content loaded event. And when that fires, then we're actually going to switch out the button. So let me go ahead and apply that. And then I'm going to go back to the cart page over here and I'm going to give it a refresh. There we go. Okay. So checkout button has been changed and it's still kind of jumped back over there. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a refresh. And checkout button is our button and then it kind of pops back. So we're going to need to think of a way to prevent this from happening and only really switch out the button. We want to have the last say. So our switched out button should be the button that lasts and not the Wix button. What I did to approach this problem is I hit the drawing board back again with ChatGPT and I explained that we have some other JavaScript which is altering the button after we switch it. So what uh, ChatGPT recommends to do here is to put in something called a mutation observer which can detect changes to a certain element and then after those changes are made we can go ahead and essentially run our replacement button function again whenever those changes are made so we're kind of just like tagging along after wix and saying okay if they change it then we change it if they change it we change it um, so that's uh, what we have over here uh, and i just grabbed this code and i replaced what we had inside of the custom checkout uh, right over here so just like that and uh, if we go ahead now to the cart page and we hit refresh uh, then we should see that this checkout button is staying as is. Okay, so just like that. Obviously, there's some styling issues over here, so we'd want to like change it so that the checkout is not here on the left side. Uh, that's just a matter of adding in some kind of CSS styling along with our script. Uh, but if we go ahead and click this button now, then this takes us to our custom checkout page instead of the uh, native Wix checkout page and now the sky is the limit here in terms of what we build and we can utilize Wix APIs such as the orders API, uh, custom forms and whatnot in order to create our own checkout experience. With that we are going to wrap up for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please let me know in the comments if you would like to see a follow-up to this tutorial, which explains a little bit more about building the custom checkout page itself, and share a bit about your project and what you have in mind for that custom checkout page and what your requirements are so I can try and build it based on your needs. I will also be publishing a blog post with the code snippets from this tutorial, which you should be able to find in the description below. Uh, and hopefully I'll also be able to release a, an app on the Wix app market, which will also allow you to just quickly implement this functionality on your car page with no code at all. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, if you enjoy the content of this tutorial and you don't want to miss out on uh, content like this that comes out weekly, I would recommend hitting that subscribe button and you'll both make me very happy and you won't miss out on the next video which could be that video which completely changes your experience on Wix and upgrades your business. So if you went ahead and hit that subscribe button, I will see you next time. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. This tutorial may be over, but that doesn't mean that your journey has to end here. YouTube will have some recommendations up above in a moment for more videos, but don't get too distracted because my eyes are over here and on the Wixwiz website, we have a lot more resources for you to continue learning or get support for your business or project. We've got a blog, beginner courses, and a community forum where you can vent about Velo or post some tough questions like, why does my header have a mind of its own? On the website, you can also find my personal calendar to schedule a one-on-one -on -one and details about getting ongoing assistance from our team of Wix experts. I'll catch you later, and don't forget that every big feature was once a small bug.